doing now? We're exploring Chattanooga. Oh wow. Finding things we never expected. Tank didn't seal quite good. So. So it turns out like apparently there's some issue with having TSO parachutes. Yeah, I mean I guess who, I don't do we even know who makes these fairly like, uh, you know they check Czechoslovakian. No. Just the lack of a pack and data card and the lack of a TSO label just really because all these riggers when they're trained. Well it doesn't have a packing like card because this is a we just imported it from Estonia. So there's an issue getting a U.S. like FAA parachute rigger to pack the you know, European, Czechoslovakian, wherever the hell they came from, parachutes. Yeah, yeah, and I can tell that it was packed in Europe last because the way they sealed it. The issue is that they're from parachutes from a foreign country and they're maybe not like FAA, TSO'd. It has, they, Europe uses paper seals where we use lead seals in the States. Not be, but so there's, there's some issue with that. So we're trying to figure out how to get the parachutes. So we dropped off yesterday, actually packed so we can fly the airplane. I think the real issue is the parachute rigger probably just hasn't seen this particular parachute before, so they're a little nervous about it. I bet when they open it up, they're going to see the data plate and it's going to be fine. Because we all know that the European Union is way more strict than the U.S. and they tend to follow all the same rules. So it'd be really surprising to me if it like, wasn't TSO. I'm going to call him back. I just wanted to pick your brain on that real quick. And then uh, I'll get right back with you. Okay, sounds good. Okay, all right. Thank you, buddy. Thanks. See you, man. Bye. So still, he thinks he can do it, but he's not quite sure. I think he's determined he can he's do it. He's going to call the guy that will actually pack it and let me know. It's okay, basically. Yeah. So now that the major components are assembled, the next big step is system function tests. We've got to get the hydraulic system ready to go. We'll add some hydraulic fluid, hook up a hydraulic mule, and swing the gear and check the flaps and the speed brakes. Basically everything but the flight controls is hydraulic on this airplane, so it's an important system to get right. So uh, you know, first thing I'm going to do is drop the gear doors so I can look in the nose okay. first. Make sure there's no packing material yep. there. And then we will swing. Okay. I like it. Cool. Alright. So let's let's do the speed brakes first. Okay. That way we can hook them up. So I guess you got some uh, pressure, do you got pressure in the emergency system right now? None. Well, that's the primary system, right? Huh. When you did that, the front canopy picks up. Yeah. So you can see they're filling up now, and you'll start building more pressure. the mule starts screaming the bypass, then you'll know it's topped off to the mule settings. Yep. So I want to pull this interconnect and that's basically going to have the airplane accumulators help the mule swing the gear up. Okay. Uh, R2-D2 looks pretty empty. The main accumulator will bleed down extremely fast. It's meant to do that. But the emergency could hold for weeks, months. Right. And that's your parking brake is on the emergency, right? If you actuate the parking brake, it won't last that long. Right. And it's probably not the trust.
the main hydraulic system also gets its head pressure from the nitrogen system that pressurizes the cabin seals. So we'll need that to reach full system pressure too. Most notably though, the brakes rely on the hydraulic system. So the most important reason to be carefully monitoring it in flight is to ensure that you'll have brakes when you land. Yep, let's drop. Pretty good. Standing on its own legs. It's exciting. Now we just get some more kind of functional checks, uh, 100 hour on the engine, and then uh, go test fly it. So in three days we've gone from having this airplane in a shipping container to having an airplane. So all the major assembly is done now, uh, taking a day off on Saturday, today, uh, sending T-Rex home, he was a big help to get that thing put together. We needed all hands on deck, um, except for mine. And uh, now we're going to go check out Chattanooga and get back to it tomorrow. Chattanooga approach, Bonanza 367 Hotel Papa VFR. 7 Hotel Papa Radar Contact, 22 miles southwest of the Chattanooga Airport. VFR up to your discretion. Discretion, enter the right downwind for runway 20. Verify you have information, Zulu. We have Zulu, we'll make a right downwind for runway 20, Bonanza 7 Hotel Papa. Chattanooga Tower, Bonanza 367 Hotel Papa for the right base, 20. Number 367 Hotel Papa, Chattanooga Tower, runway 20, clear to land. 20, clear to land, 7 Papa. Exploring Chattanooga, finding things we never expected, and uh, hotel trains. Yeah. Chattanooga Tower Bonanza 367, hotel pops ready to go, runway 20. Well, I just thought it was a little too hot to bumpy to set up front and fly on this leg. So I'm back here, stretching out in the shade, all four air vents on me, living the life. Let Matt do a little flying. I'd just tell me about the FPO. Yeah, I mean, here, just stay at full ridge. Then you can shoot for like 1350 on the number four EGT. Put the trim down just a touch. Uh, I'd pitch for about like 1. 10 or so. I usually like the cylinder head temps, like definitely below 380. I'd, I'd rather deviate. Guest traffic finance 367 Hotel Papa's uh, left base runway 18. Full stop, Gadsden. See, like here, you could put the prop full forward if you want. Yep, got it. Then you come across at 80? Yeah, 75, 80. 80 will give you a little bit more control, a little more float though, too. But we got a lot of runway. Very nice. This might be the first time I've ever been in the back of this airplane for takeoff and landing.
but but well. you get a red light for if you're uh, 150 kilograms of fuel. Yeah. What's that in gallons? What's, uh, that, what's that in minutes? I think it's about maybe 15 minutes. I mean, that, that would be logical. We'll have the new uh, transponder, and then the radio that we were supposed to get is not there, but I guess we'll work. You got it. Oh, check this out. You also have an enunciation dimmer. Mm. Does it dim the back enunciators? No, it doesn't. Um, oh, here, there's there's a dim there's a uh, there's an enunciator test here. Really? Where did you find it? I it's like the it. top top left of that side panel. Oh, okay. You have the exact same thing I do. It's yeah. just hidden. Okay. It's kind of it's kind of fun figuring out where all the stuff is because it's not exactly uniform between the front and the back canopy. Most L39s in the states have been modified a lot, so there's quite a bit of variation between cockpit layouts. Ours is pretty original, so it has a lot more of the original systems than most, and it's very different from the plane we trained in. So we had to spend a lot of time just looking around the cockpit to familiarize ourselves with it and figure out what's what and how everything is set up. Rubuhenko. Rubuhenko. Rebuhenko. Rebuhenko. Of course. That definitely sounds like a motor out there. Main generator, emergency generator, engine instruments. I don't remember if you said not to turn that on or turn that on. <laughs> <laughs> Audio panel. Radio, radio out, radar altimeter. Oh. 112.3. So it looks to me like the GPS is actually the the low. Nope, I got a half left out of you, half up on mine. Yeah. Okay. So I'll watch it and see it moves. Yep. Yeah. Center. Yeah, center. Okay. So the center is that. So why is there uh, another one? You know what? This must just be here for Omni bearing selector. That's weird. Because this says nav. Okay. Well, it must just be forced into nav. So now that all the uh, major components are together, um, hooked up a hydraulic mule and external power to do some functional tests of all the systems, make sure everything's working. And then they just have to do basically a hundred hour on the engine and we get DAR here to inspect it and go fly. What in this airplane would be so much heavier in the back? You just can't take out a whole lot in the back. You know where the light switch is? Right. Yeah. It's a rheostat yep. and then a, a red and white.
So we got it running, but uh, it's leaking some oil. They think basically it'll drain on the fuel oil heat exchanger. Uh, just had to heat it properly. So cleaning up the oil, that gets that drain to seat better. Tank didn't seal quite good. So sometimes you have to, to open it and then let it pop close and then it'll seat good. It's now 10, 10 8 p.m. I get this finished up tonight, get up in the morning, go pick up our test pilot, have the VAR show up, hopefully get the airworthiness, and then have him go fly it and see how she flies. How many sapphire starts do you think we get out of these batteries? Maybe they they like seem this. to be strong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Cool. But I think I'm about to run out of gas myself tonight. Yeah. What time are you thinking? Probably be here at seven. Okay. Okay. Well, we got a. A couple of quick uh, runs there tonight, and so basically when we shut it down the first time, uh, Shane pulled the fuel shut off because we didn't know why we were shutting it down. They just told us to shut it down, uh, and then we got to turn that back on the second time, so fired up and then quit. And now we got to do a few other things before we run it again. So basically, we're calling in tonight, getting started early tomorrow morning, run it, get the DAR here, get the airworthiness, get the test pilot here, fly it, and then go to Oshkosh. <laughs> 